Quinn Robertson watched his father die of prostate cancer and vowed he would not repeat his dad's mistakes. When it came time to treat his diseased prostate, Robertson chose a new therapy called cryoablation. Well, I liked that it was non-invasive. I liked that it was short-term on the re uh, rehabilitation of it. I liked that you could still go function, go back to work. I liked that they guaranteed me almost a 98% no problem with incontinency. Using a combination of state-of-the-art medical technologies, cryotherapy has become a third option for men with localized disease. This minimally invasive procedure destroys cancer cells by freezing them to death. Ultrasound and computer technology allows doctors to guide specialized probes in a precise pattern. Some of the probes monitor the temperature to make sure sensitive surrounding structures aren't damaged. And that's the urethra. They have to stay away from it. The ingeniously designed cryoprobes then transport lethally cold argon gas, creating an ice ball, freezing the cancer. This complex process allows doctors to treat the outside margins of the prostate, often beyond the scope of a radical prostatectomy. Once the cancer cells are frozen, they are slowly defrosted using helium gas and then refrozen. The entire procedure takes less than 90 minutes and typically patients go home within 24 hours. For more on cryoablation therapy, we're now joined via satellite by Dr. Garrel Terzaki, a urologist from St. Joseph's Hospital in Orange County, California. Welcome, doctor, and thank you for joining us here on Your Cancer Today. My pleasure. Now, doctor, you have performed a number of the cryotherapy procedures. Can you describe the theory behind them, please? Yes, cryosurgery is a treatment based on the principle that cold kills cells, and uh, it kills both malignant and benign cells when those cells are exposed to lethal temperatures. In the situation of uh, prostate cancer ablation, we're talking about minus 40 degrees centigrade, or in this situation, it's also minus 40 Fahrenheit. So basically, you're exposing the cells to very high, lethal cold temperatures leading to disruption of the cell structure and leading to cancer cell death. Well, that is truly remarkable, doctor. Now, I would have to assume that this surgery is not for everyone, correct? Well, cryoablation of the prostate is an evolving process. Uh, it started out initially uh, as a uh, treatment for patients who had failed radiation therapy, so-called salvage th therapy, and it was like a there is nothing else to do, what can we do? And then suddenly cryo looked like an option. And the early results were encouraging. However, they had to be stopped because the technical uh, backup was not uh, ideal. And uh, there were some uh, uh, pro problems encountered. However, uh, with the improvements in the, the technological delivery of the I, of the cryo, we have uh, now established that cryoablation is not only excellent for salvage uh, therapy for uh, prostate cancer that has failed radiation, but also for primary newly diagnosed uh, prostate cancer uh, patients. Well, doctor, what would you say are the advantages of this procedure? I think the key uh, argument in favor of cryoablation is that it is a mi truly minimally invasive procedure. Uh, the traditional uh, treatment for organ confined or localized uh, prostate cancer has consisted of radical prostatectomy, which is a pretty involved uh, surgical intervention, which might not be suited for everybody and radiation therapy, which again is a pretty uh, good uh, treatment for prostate cancer, except that it has uh, some short and long-term complications that we encounter. So cryoablation comes in as a lesser invasive, uh, but as effective and as uh, long-lasting uh, treatment for men who choose to have a minimally invasive procedure for their uh, prostate cancer. Well, doctor, the patient that we spoke to at the beginning of this segment was obviously very pleased with the procedure. Are there certain kinds of people who should not consider cryotherapy? Uh, well, the only uh, 
exceptions are those who have had prior prostate surgery, either in the form of uh, an open prostatectomy for benign disease or uh, a, what we call a transuterine section of the prostate, because there will be some uh, anatomical uh, changes in the area of the prostate that will not allow you to do a ideal procedure. We want to have an intact prostate to be able to uh, take full advantage of this treatment uh, modality. Other than that, uh, as we gather increasingly favorable information and outcome data on cryoablation, suddenly the relative contraindications that existed in our minds uh, seem to disappear, and it just becomes another very viable option to the patient that we present. And when I see patients, I tell them about their options, surgery versus radiation therapy versus cryoablation. We discuss the pros and cons of each of these uh, modalities, and we leave it up to the patient to make a, an educated choice. Well, this is very interesting, doctor. Now, given that we have talked about the advantages of the procedure, are there any specific risks? Well, every time you are uh, interfering with the body's normal uh, anatomy, either by cutting it out or burning it with radiation or freezing it with a minus 40 degree lethal ice, there will be some, uh, I would say, even expected complications. Fortunately, in the case of cryoablation of the prostate, uh, one of the major complications that seem to affect both the surgery and the radiation therapy on the long term is incontinence. With uh, cryoablation, the rate of incontinence is less than 1%, which is excellent. And this is, in my opinion, what men fear the most. Of course, the other side of the complications with prostate surgery is erectile dysfunction or impotence that can develop. Because, let's face it, when you want to get rid of cancer, you have to be ready to accept some risk. and. Erectile dysfunction or impotence is well known to be a uh, immediate sometimes complication that men have to face up uh, to up to 50% of the time. Well, this is a very personal story for me, doctor. Uh, my father had prostate cancer. He is a survivor, I'm glad to say. But that, of course, puts me in a higher risk group. If I find myself diagnosed one day with prostate cancer, how will I know if I'm a candidate for cryosurgery? Okay, first of all, being uh, the son of a prostate cancer patient or having, even having prostate cancer, a, a family history of prostate cancer puts you at higher risk to develop prostate cancer. So before talking to treatment, I would encourage any patient, any listener who has a family history of prostate cancer, any male in the family, uncle, cousin, you know, they are at higher risk, so they should start doing measures of early detection, prevention and detection by getting uh, annual uh, digital rectal examinations and annual PSA uh, blood tests starting at age, I would say, 45 to be uh, fair. Some people say even younger than that. Uh, now, after you are diagnosed, I hope you're not, but if you are <laughs> diagnosed with prostate cancer, uh, you have choices these days. You know, at one time, uh, it was only surgery. Later on, with radiation therapy becoming more and more effective, it was added as a, another option. And I can say without any hesitation that as of today, cryoablation uh, can and should be considered as the third very viable option to treat men with uh, localized uh, primary prostate cancer. Well, thank you, doctor. Great advice, and I will take that to heart. Our guest has been Dr. Garo Tozakian. He is a urologist with St. Joseph's Hospital in Orange County, California. Doctor, thank you so much for sharing your story and your procedures with us here on Your Cancer Today. Thank you for the opportunity.